so what's your intuition here? You had you had a conversation with Sam Harris recently that was uh, sort of um, you've had a bit of a disagreement, and you're sticking on this point. You know, Elon Musk, uh, Stuart Russell, kind of have a worry existential threats of AI. What's your intuition? Why, if we engineer an increasingly intelligent neocortex type of system in the computer, why that shouldn't be a thing that we It was interesting, you used the word intuition and Sam Harris used the word intuition too. And, and when he used that intuition, that word, I immediately stopped and I said, oh, that's the crux of the problem. Mm-hmm. He's using intuition. I'm not speaking about my intuition. Yes, I'm speaking about something I understand, something I'm going to build, something I am building, mm-hmm. something I'm, I understand completely, or at least well enough to know what it's on. I'm guessing I know what this thing's going to do. And I think most people who are worried, they have trouble separating out. I mean, they don't have they don't have the knowledge or the understanding about like what is intelligence, how is it manifest in the brain, how is it separate from these other functions in the brain. And so they imagine it's going to be human-like or animal-like. It's going to have it's going to have the same sort of drives and emotions we have. But there's no reason for that. That's just because there's there's an unknown. If you if the unknown is like, oh my God, you know, I don't know what this is going to do. We have to be careful. It could be like us, but really smarter. Mm-hmm. I'm saying no, it won't be like us. It'll be really smarter, but it won't be like us at all. And um, and but I I'm coming from that not because I just guessing. I'm not intuitive. It, using intuition, I'm basically I'm like, okay, I understand this thing works. This is what it does. I can explain it to you. Okay, but uh, to push back, so I, I also disagree with the, the intuitions that Sam has, but, but I also disagree with the, what you just said, which, you know, what's a good uh, analogy? So if you look at the Twitter algorithm in, in the early days, just recommender systems, you can understand how recommender systems work what you can't understand in the early days is when you apply that recommender system at scale to thousands and millions of people, how that can change societies. Yeah. So the, the question is, yes, you're just saying, this is how an engineer in your cortex works. But the like when you have a very useful uh, TikTok type of service that get, yeah. goes viral. When yeah. your neural cortex goes viral yeah. and then millions of people start using it, can yeah. that destroy the world? No. Uh, well, first of all, this is back. One thing I want to say is that um, AI is a dangerous technology. I don't, I'm not denying that. All technology is dangerous. Well, and AI maybe particularly so. Yeah. Okay. So um, am I worried about it? Yeah. I'm totally worried about it. The, the thing where the, the narrow component we're talking about now is the existential risk of AI. Ah. Right. Yeah. So I want to make that distinction because I think AI can be applied poorly. It can be applied in ways that, you know, people are going to sure. un- understand the, the consequences of it. Um, these are all potentially very bad things, but they're not the AI system creating this existential risk on its own. And that's the only place I disagree with other people. Right. So, so I, I think the existential risk thing is um, humans are really damn good at surviving. So to kill off the human race, it'd be very, very well, difficult. You can even, yes, but you can even, I, I'll go further. I don't think AI systems are ever going to try to. I don't think AI systems are ever going to like say, I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to do what I think is best. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, at least not in the way I'm talking about it. So you, the Twitter recommendation algorithm is an interesting example. Let's, let's use computers as an analogy again, right? I build a computer. It's a universal computing machine. I can't predict what people are going to use it for. They can build all kinds of things. They can, they can, they can even create computer viruses. It's you know all kinds of stuff. So there's some unknown about its utility and about where it's going to go. But on the other hand, I pointed out that once I build a computer, it's not going to fundamentally change how it computes. It's like I use the example of a register, which is a part internal part of a computer. Um, you know, I say it can't just sit there because computers don't evolve. They don't replicate. They don't evolve. They don't, you know, the physical manifestation of the computer itself is not going it, to, there's certain things it can't do. Right, so we can break into things like things that are possible to happen, we can't predict, and things that are just impossible to happen. They're, unless we go out of our way to make them happen, they're not gonna happen unless somebody makes them happen. Yeah, so the, there's there's a bunch of things to say. One is the physical aspect, which you're absolutely right. We have to build a thing for it to operate in the physical world, and you can just stop building them, uh, you know, the, the moment 
they're not doing the thing you want them to do. Or just change the design. <laughs> or change the design. The question is, I mean, there's, uh, it's possible in the physical world, this is probably longer term, is you automate the building. It makes, it makes a lot of sense to automate the building. There's a lot of factories that are doing more and more and more automation to go from raw resources yeah. to the final product. It's possible to imagine that it's obviously much more efficient to keep, to create a, f a factory that's creating robots that do something, uh, you know, that do something extremely useful for society. It could be uh, personal assistance. It could be, uh, it could be, <laughs> it could be your toaster, but a toaster that's much has a deeper knowledge of your culinary preferences. Yeah. <laughs> and and that could uh, well, get I think trouble. now you've hit on the right thing. The real thing we need to be worried about, Lex, is self replication. Right, that is the thing that we're in about. the physical world. Yeah, or even the virtual world, self replication because self replication is dangerous. It's probably more likely to be killed by a virus, you know, or a human engineered virus. Mm -hmm. Anybody can create a you know this. The technology is getting so almost anybody, well not anybody, but a lot of people could create yeah. an, a human engineered virus that could wipe out humanity. That is really dangerous. No intelligence required, just self-replication. So, um, so we need to be careful about that. So when I think about you know, AI, I'm not thinking about robots building robots. Don't do that. Don't build a, you know, just- Well, that's because you're interested in creating intelligence. It seems like self-replication is a good way to make a lot of money. Well, all right, but so is, you know, maybe editing viruses is a good way too. I don't know. The point is, if, as a society, when we want to look at existential risks, the existential risks we face that that we can control almost all evolve around self-replication. Yes. The uh, question is, I don't see a good uh, way to make a lot of money by engineering viruses and deploying them on the world. Well, right, so, but, there but, could be there so could be applications that are useful. But let's for separate out. Let's separate out. I mean, you, you don't need to. All you need is some, you know, terrorist who wants to do it because it doesn't take a lot of money to make viruses. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just separate out what's risky and what's not risky. Mm -hmm. I'm arguing that the intelligence side of this equation is not risky. It's not risky. It's okay. not risky at all. It's the self-replication side of the equation that's risky. Right. And I'm not dismissing that. I'm scared as hell. It's like the paperclip maximizer yeah. thing. Yeah. The, the, those are often like talked about in the same conversation. Um, I think you're right. Like creating ultra intelligent, super intelligent systems is not necessarily coupled with a self-replicating, arbitrarily self-replicating systems. Yeah, and you don't get evolution unless you're self-replicating. Yeah. And so I think that's the gist of this argument, that people yeah. have trouble separating those two out. They just think, oh, yeah, intelligence is like us. And look how look at the damage we've done to this planet. Look how we've you know destroyed all these other species. Yeah, well, we replicate. We have 8 billion of us or 7 billion of us now. So um, I, I think the idea is that the, the more intelligent we're able to build systems, the more tempting it becomes from a capitalist perspective of creating products, the more tempting it becomes to create self-reproducing uh, okay. systems. All right, uh, so let's say that's true. So does that mean we don't build intelligent systems? No, that means we regulate, we we understand the risks, uh, we regulate them. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, there's a lot of things we could do as society which have some sort of financial benefit to someone which could do a lot of harm. And we have to learn how to regulate those things. We have to learn how to deal with those things. I will argue this. I would say the opposite, Lex. I would say having intelligent machines at our disposal will actually help us in the end more because it'll help us understand these risks better. It'll help us mitigate these risks better. There might be ways of saying, oh, well, how do we solve climate change problems? You know, How do we do this or how do we do that? Um, that just like computers are dangerous in the hands of the wrong people, but they've been so great for so many other things, we live with those dangers. And I think we have to do the same with intelligent machines. We just, but we have to be constantly vigilant about this idea of a bad actors doing bad things with them, and b um, don't ever ever create a self-replicating system. Um, uh, and and by the way, I don't even know if you could create a self-replicating system that uses a factory. That's really dangerous. You know, nature's way of self-replicating is so amazing. Um, you know, it doesn't require anything. It just, you know, the, the thing and resources and it goes, right? Yeah. Um, if I said to you, you know what, we have to build, uh, our goal is to build a factory that can make, that builds new factories. And it has to end-to-end -end supply chain. Yeah. Has to, it has to yeah. mine the resources, get the energy. I mean, 
That's really hard. It's you know, no one's doing that in the next, you know, 100 years. <laughs> I've been extremely impressed by the efforts of Elon Musk and Tesla to try to do exactly that. Not not from raw resource. Well, he actually I think states the goal is to go from raw resource to the uh the final car in one factory. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the main goal. Yeah. Of course, it's not currently possible, but they're taking huge leaps. Well, he's not that. the only one to do that. This this has been a goal for many uh industries for a long long time. Um It's difficult to do. Well, a lot of people what they do is instead they have like a million suppliers and then they like there's everybody's managing well, they all co locate them and yeah. they and they so tie the systems together. It's, it's a fundamentally yeah. distributed but even system. Then, I, I think that's that also is not getting at the issue I was just talking about, yeah. um, which is self replication. It's, um, I mean, self replication means there's no entity involved other than the entity that's replicating, um, okay. right? And, and so if there's humans in this in the loop, that's not really self replicating, right? It's unless somehow we're duped into doing <laughs> you know? well but it's also I, I, I don't necessarily agree with you because you you've kind of mentioned that ai will not say no to us i, I just think they will say, uh, yeah yeah so true. like uh i think it's a useful feature to build in i'm just trying to like uh put myself in the mind of engineers to sometimes say no you know, if you, you yeah, well, I, mean, I gave, 9, I gave, I gave the example, example earlier, right? I gave the example of my car. Yeah. Right. My car turns the wheel and and applies the accelerator and the brake, as I say, until yeah. it decides there's something dangerous. Yes. And then it doesn't do that. Yeah. Now, that was something it didn't decide to do. It's something we programmed into the car, mm -hmm. uh, and so good. It's a good idea, right? <laughs> the question again isn't like if we create an intelligent system, will it ever ignore our commands of course it will and sometimes is it going to do it because it came up came up with its own goals that serve its purposes and it doesn't care about our purposes no i don't think that's going to happen